Welcome everyone. In this video, I am going to go over two examples involving quadratic approximation. The first example is going to show how quadratic approximation can give more information than the linear approximation and the second example will show how it can fail to do that. So let's start with the formula we derived in the last video about quadratic approximation. It turns out that if we want to approximate f of x, any function, we can do it by using a quadratic approximation, which has the formula f of x naught plus f prime of x naught, f prime means the derivative of our function f, times x minus x naught plus f double prime x naught divided by 2 x minus x naught squared. As I said, this is the linear approximation for our function f, and this approximation is centered at x is equal to x naught. Here, this, these two terms, the first two terms are our linear approximation, and then we add this additional term that accounts for the second derivative, we get the quadratic approximation. So as you can see, quadratic approximation has the linear approximation in it. Well, before moving on with our examples, let's think about how linear uh, quadratic approximation might not be able to provide further information. It might be in the case that this blue thing, this second derivative thing, is equal to zero. So if this term is equal to zero, then our quadratic and linear approximations are the same. And we will actually see this in our second example. So for the first example, I want to consider, and let me separate this like this. I want to consider the function f of x is equal to cosine of x. All right. And since we are going to need its derivatives, the first and the second derivatives, let's just evaluate them so that we don't need to in the future. So f prime of x, what is the derivative of cosine of x with respect to x? I approved this in a video that was a long time ago. You can find it on the cards. This is negative sine of x. And what is the derivative of negative sine of x? Well, derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. So we have the negative as well. So it is negative cosine of x. Great. And I want to choose my x naught as zero. So I am interested in my function cosine of x's behavior as, as I move closer and closer to zero. So I am interested in small angles to say. And this is really helpful in most of most physics problems. This really comes up in a lot of cases. So we are really interested in small angles. Well then, let's write our approximation. We will have cosine of x is approximately equal to f of 0, which is cosine of 0, plus f prime of 0. f prime is, well, yeah, let's do it like this. Negative sine of 0 then. Put the parentheses there. Times, we have x minus 0, so let's just put it as x. Then... Well, hold on a second. Now, this is the linear approximation, right? This, until this, this is the linear approximation. So let's see what this gives us. This gives us 1 and sine of 0 is 0, so this gives us 0. Which means the linear approximation for cosine of x is just 1. I mean, it is correct that 1 is the linear approximation, but it doesn't really, you know, satisfy you when you think about it. I mean, if you were to have a small angle, any small angle, we would say that it is equal to 1. Its cosine is equal to 1. So we can't, we are not able to distinguish between small angles. We give one result for any angle. And this isn't really nice, I would say. So if we take a step further and consider the quadratic term, so that we have the quadratic approximation, now we have the negative cosine of 0 divided by 2, and we have x minus 0 squared, so we just have x squared. Here, this cosine of 0, this goes to 1, so we have a negative 1 over 2 x squared term. So, in short, the 
quadratic approximation for cosine of x near uh, uh, 0 is 1 minus 1 over 2x squared. And this is it. As you can see, quadratic approximation is able to provide a lot more information than the linear approximation. Without the quadratic, we only have this one. But with the quadratic, we have even this term and we also have one still. All right. And I won't do this in this video, but if you want yourself, you can check how close this approximation is. For example, try a small value for x here and try it evaluating it with this polynomial and see how close you are. Also, an important note, x here is in radians. If you do this in degrees, it won't make any sense. We are working with radians, just a side note. So this was the first example, and you saw that quadratic approximation is really helpful. What about an example where it might not provide further information? And it is going to be, you perhaps guessed it, cosine's good old friend, sine of x, the sine. Well, what is its first derivative? The derivative of sine of x is, as I proved in the same video that I proved, derivative of cosine of x. It is, yes, you guessed it right, cosine of x. And if we take the derivative of cosine of x, we will get negative sine of x. Right? We even discussed it here. That is what we get. And as I proved it. So let's then again choose our x not as 0. And you might be wondering why we always choose it as 0. Because the one of the reasons is, as I said, in physics, this really simplifies the questions a lot. For example, when you're dealing with a pendulum, you, are, you can assume small angles, which is, I believe, less than 10 degrees or something. You can assume, make that assumption and be able to solve your question algebraically. Otherwise, you would need other tools to be able to solve it. So enough said. Let's do the approximation for sine of x near 0. Looking at, looking at our formula, we had f of x not. So we have f of 0, which is sine of 0 in our case. Plus, we had the first derivative evaluated at 0. So we have cosine of 0 times x minus x naught, so x minus 0, just x, plus f double prime of 0 we had, so it is negative sine of 0 divided by 2, then we have x minus 0 squared, so just x squared. This is the linear approximation term, right? And let's see what it gives us. Sine of 0 is 0 and cosine of 0 is 1 so we get the famous approximation actually it is very famous that sine of x is approximately equal to x for small angles and that is what we get with the linear approximation and if you want to take it even if even a step further with quadratic approximation we will say let's look at this term we will say and then we will be surprised because sine of 0 is 0 this term goes to 0 so our quadratic approximation isn't able to contribute with further information. We still get the linear approximation for sine of x. We get that both the linear and the quadratic approximations for sine of x near uh, x is equal to 0 is x. So this is great. And as I said, this doesn't provide further information. The quadratic approximation, in a sense, you could say fails here. But you can also be happy that it fails because you have a much simpler expression. And this doesn't only have the precision of a linear approximation. It also has the precision of a quadratic approximation. All right. And if we were to do the cubic approximation, the cubic term would actually contribute. But this is enough for this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.